Hello everyone, my name is Dilmer Vallecillos and I am a developer advocate at Meta. In this session, we're going to talk about how to get started with VR development and help you build your own immersive experiences for the Meta Horizon Store. This will cover essential tools such as the Unity Game Engine, SDKs from Meta, the Project Setup Tool, and Building Blocks. The goal of this session is to help you deploy your first VR experience to your own MetaQuest headset. To get started, let's make sure that your system has the minimum requirements to create an immersive experience for MetaQuest. If you're planning to develop on macOS, Windows, or Linux, I recommend using the following. For Windows, Windows 10 or newer, an Intel x64 architecture processor, or ARM64 and RedX or greater, or Vulkan-capable GPUs. For macOS, Big Sur 11 or newer, Apple M1 or newer for silicon-based processors. Linux 22.4 or Ubuntu 24.04, an x64 architecture processor, OpenGL 3.2 or greater, or Vulkan-capable or NVIDIA or AMD GPUs. Now that we have identified the computer requirements, we can move on to creating a VR-ready Unity project. To do this, let's first head over to unity.com download to download and install a tool called the Unity Hub. For context, the Unity Hub is a standalone application that serves as a central hub for managing Unity projects, Unity editor installations, and also learning resources. I recommend creating a Unity account and obtaining a free license before proceeding to the next steps. Open the Unity Hub, click on Install, and install the latest available Unity 6 version that is compatible with your system. In my case, I'll be installing Unity for Windows, enable Visual Studio as your IDE. You can change this later if you prefer to use a different IDE. Then enable Android Build Support. Open JDK and Android SDK and the NDK tools. Now that Unity 6 is installed, we can proceed to create a new Unity URP project. URP is the recommended rendering pipeline for VR due to its performance optimizations, cross-platform compatibility, and a motor rendering feature. Click on New Project, select the Universal 3D template as a starting point, select your Unity organization, or if you don't have one, simply create it by going to idunity.com, then select it. Give your project a name. In my case, I'll be using Blossom Body. Select a project location, and lastly, click on Create Project. At this point, you should have a standalone project created. To build a project for a MetaQuest device, you need to switch the target platform to MetaQuest. To do this, simply go to File, Build Profiles, Select MetaQuest to enable it, and then click on Switch Platform. Unity may need to re-import your assets in formats compatible with the new target platform. And recompile your scripts, which should take some time to do. Now we have a MetaQuest project completely created and ready to start with. In the hierarchy, we have three game objects, a main camera, a directional light, and also a global volume, which is meant for post-processing. Let's delete the main camera and also the global volume. The main camera will be replaced later in the session by using the camera rig building block instead. The main camera game object has the correct input bindings to retrieve the headset position and also rotation. Let's proceed by downloading and importing the SDKs from Meta packages so that we can start setting up the camera rig and also other VR specific components. Our recommendation is to keep your project lean by installing individual packages. For context, you could install the Meta XR Interaction SDK. To follow our recommendation, install only what you need at the stage of your development process. In our case, just head over to the Unity Asset Store and add the Meta Mixed Reality Utility Kit Asset and Meta XR Core SDK. These assets will provide us with core functionality such as the camera rig, controller tracking, and environment ray casting functionality through the Mixed Reality Utility Kit, which we'll use today for rendering and placement of 3D objects. Back in the Package Manager, we should be able to find our new assets, install only the Meta Mixed Reality Utility Kit, and the Meta XR Core SDK 
will be installed automatically due to its dependencies on the Mixed Reality Utility Kit. Do not enable XR feature sets yet, in addition to Unity's core OpenXR plugin, which was installed automatically earlier. We also need a specific OpenXR package for Meta. This will enable us to use occlusion and also environment ray casting, which is native to the Meta technologies with OpenXR. Now you should see a new option in Unity labeled Meta XR Tools. Click on it and select the Project Setup tool. We'll return to this area in a minute. But first, let's make sure that OpenXR is configured properly for both platforms, a standalone and MetaQuest. Enable Meta XR Feature Group for MetaQuest and a standalone, then head over to OpenXR and add a new option under Enable Interaction Profiles. Select Oculus Touch Controller Profile, and this will handle OpenXR input mappings to bind correctly in Unity. Then enable MetaQuest, Occlusion, and MetaQuest Session. Do this once again for both platforms. For MetaQuest, I won't add an Oculus Touch Controller Profile on purpose. This will be fixed by the Project Setup tool. Go back to the Project Setup tool by clicking on MetaXR. This tool helps you quickly configure projects for the SDK by reviewing and fixing common setup issues. It enforces a set of rules to ensure best practices, compatibility, and also performing optimizations should be met. Apply all the recommendations to both platforms by clicking Fix All. I recommend reading through each recommendation to better understand what settings this tool is about to change. All right, now we need to add a few essential building blocks to fully prepare our project for deployment on MetaQuest. Let's start by taking a look at building blocks. Click on Meta XR Tools option and then Building Blocks. Building blocks are essentially pre-built components that encapsulate a variety of SDKs, allowing you to quickly integrate features like hand tracking, controller tracking, pass-through, and interactions into projects with minimal coding. One great feature I love about building blocks is having a variety of group building blocks collections. This allows you to quickly find out what blocks are available depending on the use case. For example, let's click on Mixed Reality and click on Pass-Through Building Block to see additional block details, including dependencies. Click on the plus symbol to add the Pass-Through Building Block, and you'll notice here that two blocks are added in the hierarchy. One is going to be your camera rig, which is a dependency of the pass-through building block, and the second one is the pass-through building block itself. Let's also add a controller tracking building block to track and render our MetaQuest controllers. To test our scene with a basic model, simply right-click on the hierarchy, click on 3D object, add a cube, and name it Simple Red Cube. I'll quickly create a basic ray material and assign it to this cube so that it stands out. Since we're dealing with an immersive experience, we need to make sure that the cube's position and scale are correct. Keep in mind that one unit in Unity is equivalent to one meter in the real world. Resize the cube to one ten of each axis and change its position to one on the Y axis and also one on the Z axis. This way, the simple red cube will be placed in front of the user when the app launches. Go back to the Project Setup tool and review all the changes. There may or may not be new recommendations as they update as you add new building blocks. Next, I'd like to show you how to enable developer mode on your MetaQuest device. To enable developer mode, we'll need to have a Meta account. If you don't have one, simply go to developers.meta.com slash horizon, log in, and then click on Sign up for a Meta account. Provide an email and additional details about you. This next step will require that you verify your account by using a two-factor authentication or using a payment method. Click on Next to provide organization name, and that should complete the account creation. Now download the Meta Horizon app on your mobile device and log in with your new account. You'll be prompted to pair a new device, select your MetaQuest model, and follow the instructions to pair your headset. Once pairing is complete, head over to Headset Settings, Developer Mode, and toggle the Developer Mode option to activate it. Connect your MetaQuest device to your computer via USB-C, preferably 
using a cable that supports USB-C 3.0 or higher speeds. You should see a pop-up on your headset asking for permissions to allow this USB connection. Make sure to allow it. In Unity, click on File, Build Profiles, and your device should now show under Run Device dropdown. If not, simply click on Refresh to select it. Click on Build and Run and provide your app with an APK name. For this app, we're going to be using Hello HelloRedCube.apk. Great, you did it. We now have a fully working VR experience running on your MetaQuest device. We have a camera, pass-through, controller tracking, and our simple Red Cube is positioned right in front of the user. But I feel like we're missing some interactions. To show you the potential of building blocks, let me introduce you to the Meta XR Interaction SDK package. First, let's get it from the Package Manager. If you don't see it under My Assets, you can find it in the Unity Asset Store. Now drag and drop a grabbable interactable onto our simple Red Cube. And this is the results of adding SDK graph functionality for a basic demo. The controller graph interactions are fully functional. Even better, we can seamlessly switch back and forth between controllers, enhance, and it's all handled smoothly for us. OK, we now have a Red Cube showing on our headset, which is great. However, we don't want to leave it at that. Instead, let's add a more polished demo by replacing the cube with this great looking robot. Now add a new building block called Instant Content Placement. This building block uses live depth sensing data to find and hit points on surfaces without needing a space setup. We'll delete some of the added building blocks except for the Environment Raycast Manager. And since we have a custom version of the Instant Content Placement called Plan Placement Robot Controller, that handles spawning, directs the robot to the plans, spawn positions, and manages the robot animation states. This component also requires a few tweaks to its line render references to the robot animator controller, the hands and controllers use when placing plans, and the list of plans will be spanning. That's it. Let's add the current scene to our scene list, create a new build, and deploy it. And this time, we have an option to aim at the desired location and pressing the A button now spawns a new plan. Our robot also travels towards the spawn plans. Notice that we didn't have to set up our space. The Instant Content Placement Building Block and the Environment Raycast Manager allow us to easily use a raycast with the real-world surfaces. Well, that's it. If you follow along and complete all the steps, congratulations. Huge thank you for watching this session. We hope it helped you in guiding you through the basics of creating your first VR experience. Lastly, download the Meta XR Interaction SDK or any of the individual packages shown today to begin prototyping your next app or game.